Good morning, everybody. Salt was so commonplace, light at a, a place where there, the houses had no windows was something valued. Salt preserves in an age when there were no refrigerators and commercial chemical preservatives. Salt gives flavor. It gives people a happy palate. If there is no flavor, any food, no matter how fresh, will become unsavory. Salt is so commonplace, so important, so valued. If the Lord were to come today, probably He would say something like, You are the TikTok of the earth. Because that's what the young people value more than anything else. We are number one in TikTok in this part of the region of Southeast Asia. Or probably for those who value their gadgets, you are the gadget of the earth. But the Lord chose something common, something so valued, something so taken for granted, something so available, but not quite. Because the early Roman soldiers received their salary in the root word of salarium, which is sal, salt. They received their salary in salt. That was how important salt was, and it was not common, at least in the Roman Empire at the time. Nowadays, we need to find out what we really mean when the Lord said, you are the salt of the earth. But then we have to find it in proper context. That is the text that need to be situated in context. The context is the first reading, and uh, the first reading tells us, if you do good to the hungry, the oppressed, the homeless, the orphans, your light shall break forth like the dawn. How consoling. If you do good, your light shall break forth like the dawn. The dawn is the darkest moment of the night. It is always darkest just before dawn, when the world apparently is in still motion. In the world of stillness, that is when thieves become active. Not even a blade of grass glows because there is no wind. It is the darkest, most silent time of night. And this is when evil becomes very, very active. Your light shall break forth like the dawn. It comes after the reminder for us to do good to the hungry, the oppressed, the homeless, and the orphans. And then in the other second part of the first reading, it tells us if you shun, avoid oppression, if you avoid false accusations, Kung hindi ka nagmamarites, nagmamarisol, at nagtotolit sa tangkakalat ng fake news at mga maling akusasyon sa mga taong kinamumuhian mo, malicious speech, then the light shall shine for you in the darkness. The implication is very clear. If you spread fake news, if you spread rumors against people whom you hate, then the light will not shine in the darkness for you. But what does it mean for the light to shine in the darkness? The second reading from the letter of Paul gives us a clue. He says no to sublimity of words or wisdom. He says no to the trappings of popularity, position, and privilege. But he says yes to what? I have resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I'd like you to note that. He said, I resolve to know of nothing more, nothing less, nothing else, but to know Christ. But the sentence doesn't end there. He says, to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I just came from uh, Cebu and Leyte. 
And in Southern Leyte, the, the, there are so many motorcycles. And one thing that I don't like about that part of the Visayas and Mindanao, all the motorcycles have got double lights. It's LED, it's supposed to be forbidden. So when you are driving, a, a crossing or driving opposite the direction of people with motorcycles, it's hard to see where you're going because you're blinded by their light. The Lord says you are the light of the world, but if you blind others with your brilliance, that is not what he means. You are the light of the world, but if you boast of nothing but your titles, your position in government or out of government, in church or out of the church, in religious life or out of religious life, your light is too bright as to blind other people because you're always boasting of the sublimity of wisdom and of power, then you are not salt and light of the world. The modern cars that now are coming out and China is producing so many of them, that's why everybody has a car now. And that is why here, even here, everywhere all over the country, Many families have three or four cars, but they have only one garage. And so what happens? They park their cars outside of the gate of somebody else's gate. Nag-aaway. Sila pagalit pag pinagsabihan mo. Nagkalat ang kotse sa public spaces. And you know very well, Doña Soledad becomes a parking lot on certain times, in the morning and in the afternoon. These modern cars, they have what they call running lights. As soon as you turn on the ignition or you push the button, the headlights are on. And in some places of California, many years ago, you are surprised that in the country roads towards Oregon, when you go towards Oregon or um, where Las Vegas is Nevada, you are told to put on your headlights even during midday, even during the daylight. I didn't understand what it meant, and now I do. You don't turn on the light so that you see the way. You turn on your light so that you become visible. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do you light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand for people to see. You are the light of the world, so what does that mean? Unless you do good to the hungry, the oppressed, and the homeless, there is no light in you. Your light shall break forth like the dawn. No. The, gospel, the first reading tells us your light shall break forth like the dawn. If your light is visible through kindness, through charity, through justice, your light shall break forth like the dawn if you are the light that says no to what? To corruption. Ukraine is the second most corrupt nation in Europe, next only to Russia, the Russian Federated States. Where do you think we are? Where do you think all this artificial jacking up of prices of onions come from? In my whole lifetime, this is the only time I witness na nagmamahal ang sibuyas na parang ginto. At ang sunod na magmamahal ay ang asin. We are surrounded by salt. We've got 118,000 kilometers of shoreline. We are surrounded by sea. And yet somebody had the bright idea of imitating Western Europe and America to make it a law that all salt should be iodized. And therefore, the poor salt makers cannot afford the machines and the technology to iodize salt. Nabuhay naman tayo ng daan-daang taon ng walang iodized salt. E gaya-gaya sa Amerika. Yung flavored salt na kulay rosas, pag nagdala ka noon sa California, kinukumpis ka. Bakit? Sa pagkata nag import ng salt ay mga Filipino-Americans na may hawak sa mga matataas na pinuno sa gobyerno. Kung kaya ipagbawal ang mga Pilipino nagdadala ng tuyo, ng asin, ng crispy pata, 
at ng mga pure foods, meat products, artificial. When you don't deal with the hungry, the oppressed, and the homeless, your light will not shine forth like the dawn. If you don't shine away from corruption, from oppression, from false accusation, from fake news, from being marites, marisol, and tolits, malicious speech, the light shall not shine for you in the darkness. You are the light of the world, and the running lights of these modern cars can give us a clue. Why do you put on the light during the daytime? Not because you want to show off your PhD diplomas. Not because you want to show off your four cars with only one parking lot. Not because you want to show off your power, position, prestige, and privilege. Not because you want to show off everything you have. You know, alahas, that is not the equivalent of salt. It might be good for you. It's good in itself. But it's not necessarily good for others. Your gadget might be good now because you bought it yesterday, but in six months' time, it's already passé and no longer good for you and no longer good in itself and definitely will not be good for others also. But salt is always good for you, even if you have high blood. You need a little salt. Salt is always good in itself because it preserves, it gives flavor. Salt is always good for everybody else because salt is a necessity. It is so common, so important. We need it, but you need to act your part. And what is this? Acting your part means you are not your gadgets, you are salt. You are not your jewelries. You are salt. You are not your possessions. No, you are salt of the earth. You are not your titles. You are salt of the earth. You are light for others. You are meant to be visible. You are not your clothes, your degrees, your positions. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. But there is a warning attached to this. If salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? You are the light of the world. It is set on a lampstand. Your light must shine before others, that they may see not your titles and your successes, but your good deeds. And then the promise of the prophet in the first reading will ring through. Then your light shall shine in the darkness.